Thanks again for joining today's demonstration of Crafter Studio, the authoring component of Crafter CMS. My name is Russ Danner. I'm the VP of Products here at Crafter Software, and I will be guiding us on this demo. We're going to take a really brief look at the salient authoring capabilities of Crafter CMS. Okay, let's jump right into the demo. Okay, we're going to start by logging in here to Crafter Studio. This is a web-based application, so there's nothing to install. And when I sign in, you can see that I can see the sites that I am allowed to manage. So this is a multi-tenant environment. I can manage many experiences of different types here in the environment. And there are different views here. One has a preview, others do not. You can also get some other basic information like publishing status for each site. I can edit some basic details of a given site. Also, if I want to create a new site, I go up here to create site and I can either start with some out of the box basic blueprints. I can also create from remote Git repository, which is an extremely powerful capability for supporting the development process. You can also create sites from our marketplace of pre-built site blueprints of all types from brochure web websites to e-commerce websites, video centers, and so on. Every blueprint has a number of screenshots, a description, and some other information like licensing. And if you like what you see, you simply click use, fill in whatever details are required, and then move forward with the process to create the site. Okay, just looking around here a bit more, you can see here that as an administrator, I have access to a number of tools here uh, from the sites menu. These are more of an administrative feature and I want to talk about editing. So we're going to go ahead and click on one of these existing sites here called editorial. And this will take us to the in context preview for that site. You can see here that editorial is the context. I've got this menu on the left here called sidebar, which gives us access to all kinds of authoring tools and configuration. And if we want to have more of a preview uh, area, we can open and close this sidebar with the crafter logo. And that gives us more canvas in our in context preview. And we call it in context preview because it's a fully functional version of our site, but in a safe authoring sandbox, and you can see I can browse around and click on links and move about the site. And I also use this studio tools uh, like this navigation bar here to either type in a URL or select a page and move around that way. So let's go back to the home page here. And now that we've seen that we can move around, let's talk about editing content. So as an author, if I want to edit content, that needs to be really, really simple. And I want to be able to edit things as I see them. So when, to do that, I can turn on the editing tools here up in the upper right hand corner. And then you can see as I mouse over different editable regions of the page, I can just select them and start editing. So here, let's just put some demo text in, click out, and that change is made, saved, and versioned. We'll go ahead and put some more demo text there. And again, you can see it's in place editing. Uh, your styles are applied. And it's not just text, it's also images. So if I want to you know, look at these assets here in the asset gallery and find an image that I want to put and simply drag it uh, from the asset gallery onto the page and make that change. Again, very, very simple to make uh, these types of edits. Let's make another edit here in the features area. Simple edit here, another edit. <laughs> and uh, you can see just how easy that is. So we've made a handful of changes already. And it's very, very straightforward to do that. Okay, now let's add a component to the page. And you can see here, I've opened up the components panel and I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop a features component onto the page. So I drag it out onto the page and I can position it where I want it, let it go. And a component is just inserted. There's some example content that we can then change. And I think that makes it nice and easy because we, we're not starting from an empty fields that we have to fill out. We start from example content and we can change it. We can also right click on a component and go to edit. And this opens up a form. And this is the first time we're going to see a form within Crafter Studio here. And you can see form-based content editing gives us access to all of the fields. And that's really useful when we've got something like a non-visual field that might govern behavior or metadata or some other uh, type of settings. Okay, we've seen it's really simple to edit content, add assets, and even do layouts. Now that we've done that, we want to look at how this content will look on different channels. And you can see here, I can easily jump into a device simulator and look at smartphone layout, tablet layout. We can turn that layout on its side if we want. It's just really simple to see what your content's going to look like on different channels. Another important feature in CMS is audience targeting or personalization and the ability to preview that inside the CMS. So let's open up the audience targeting panel and scroll down to the section of the site where we're showing featured articles. And you can see here, that there's no targeting applied. Well, we're gonna go up to segment here and choose guy and apply it. And now you see the system 
showing exactly what we will see if our user is a guy. Let's change that to gal and apply, and here we can quickly preview that as well. Okay, so we're going to make that really easy for you to see. Now, we're going to go back into the device simulator and choose a smartphone. And here we can see two things layered up at once, personalization and channel. And that's something you'll see around the Crafter tools, whether it's A-B testing or language. doesn't matter. We want you to be able to layer up all these different facets at once and see them before you make your publishing decisions. Now let's focus on these buttons up here in the context nav, which gives us access to the workflow state and a lot of content editing capabilities for the specific content that we're looking at, as well as access to advanced functionality like dependencies, history, and so on. History allows us to recover from mistakes, so I want to show you that. Let's click on history, and here you can see our version history, and then you can see that we can compare any version to either the head or other versions. And when we do that, we see this red-green comparison, which shows us what has been added and what has been deleted. Now let's navigate back to the history, and we're going to click on one of the versions again, but this time we're going to choose a revert. So here you can see a confirmation box. We're going to confirm that revert. And now if we go back and look, we see the page as it was before we added that feature. So we always can get back to any moment in time within our version history. We never lose anything with Crafter. All right, now I want to focus on the sidebar here. And if you remember, this is where we can open this set of tools here uh, with the Crafter logo. And what we're going to do is focus on the site explorer. We're going to open up the pages tree here. And we'll go down and open up the components tree as well. So you can see you can have any number of cabinets. And if we look here at the pages, you can see each item has the workflow uh, buttons there that we can click and we can see the workflow state, and again, all of the editing and workflow options for an item. If we click on a page, you'll see that that will help navigate us to that page, and we can browse around very easily through this menu as well. And if we click on a folder or a page that has children, you'll see that we're able to browse down inside of it. And this is a big change from Crafter 3, which always sort of opened a tree, collapsed a tree. Here you can see there are breadcrumbs. Uh, the content is paginated, so you can have any number of items inside of a folder, and you can work through the different pages of them. And we've also added some filtering capability as well, so that if you're in a large uh, folder with a lot of items or something with a lot of ch child items, we can easily filter uh, those items. So here, let's just quickly filter for entertainment, and you can see that filtering working. So just makes it a little bit easier to find your content uh, when you've got a lot of it. Let's go ahead and remove that filter, and then we can see here that all of the content again shows up for the given level that we're at. Another big authoring activity that our users have is working with static assets like images, videos, PDFs, and other types of Office documents. And for that, Crafter has a sort of standard cabinet called static assets. So let's go ahead and look at that. And I want to focus on this image folder and bulk upload. So let's click upload here and you can see that this is going to open up a drop zone and we're going to go into my file system and grab a folder that has a lot of different images. So I'm just showing you that we're going to highlight those, drag them over and start uploading them. And you can see here it's counting the uploads and in the back end, it'll actually run image transformations, video transcodes and other uh, types of processing. Uh, once the upload is complete, we can close that and uh, then we can go back and see our images in the system. So let's open up this images folder here and we see all the new images that we uploaded. We can tell that because of their workflow state. We can click on them and preview them. So let's click around here. You get a little sense of the preview capabilities. And uh, now that we have our images in the system, let's go over to assets and the asset library. And let's look around a bit. Here we can see that those images are not on the first page, so we're going to use the pagination to page through our assets. And let's find one that we like, like this sunset here. And let's place it on the page. And it looks a little big, so let's find another one. Let's, uh, and here I see this uh, image of a nice uh, mountain pass. I'm going to paste that on. It looks really good here. And you can see just how easy it is to bring a lot of assets into the system and then place them into your site or experience. Let's finish up by talking about publishing. So what we're going to do is go to the publishing dialog for this page. And here you can see the item that we want to publish. And if we choose dependencies, we can see that there are no dependencies for this item. But Crafter does calculate dependencies like images for you. Now, 
You can also see that we can publish immediately or on a schedule. And let's go ahead and set a schedule here. So if we want to set a specific date, we can do that, but we won't. And then we can set a time that we want to publish the content on. So let's go ahead and set something here a little bit into the future. Okay, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and choose the publishing target. And in Crafter, we support a staging publishing target and a live publishing target. And then once we've done that, we can put a comment in that relates to this publish. And then we just simply approve the publish. Now you can also put things into a workflow where there's approvals, but in this case, we're an administrator and we can just publish. If we look closely throughout the application, we can see that this specific item, the home page, is marked as scheduled. So we just saw it there in the workflow actions. We can also see it here on the workflow dashboard. Of course, there's nothing in the pending approval queue, but in the approved scheduled items, we see the home page as a scheduled item, which is going to stay in that area until it is published at the specified time. And then it'll move to the recently published dashboard. And here you can see those are organized by date. We also see items in our recent activities dashboard. And down below that, we see the icon guide, which shows all the workflow states that are overlaid to give the complete picture of any particular piece of content in workflow. OK, we've given the system a few moments to work through the schedule and publish our content. So now we're going to open the publishing status dialog box here and see that our item does indeed get published on the schedule. Now that that's done, let's close this dialog and we'll see that the status of the home page has updated to live everywhere. So here we see it in the toolbar and we can also open the page explorer here and see the home page is also marked live here as well. So it's really, really simple to publish content. Workflow is just as easy. So that concludes our demo here. We're going to go ahead and log out. So I want to mention that we really only focus today on a high-level overview of the authoring capabilities, just trying to highlight the ease of use for content authors. But it's also important to understand that Crafter provides developers and operations teams with this really awesome platform that allows you to build any kind of digital experience in any language with any framework and make it easy for authors to edit it. And so there's a lot of technical benefits here that we're not spending the time to talk about today that we would love to go over with you if that's something that's of interest to you. So please feel free to reach out to us about that if you want to get a little bit deeper into that. Or if you want to see an expanded authoring demo, we'd be happy to show you that as well. So just reach out to us.